Yeah, people, welcome. Um, I, I guess many of you are uh, still at work, uh, although maybe no one, of course, joined the live stream yet because it's just a couple of seconds ago. But anyway, uh, all right, welcome to another live stream. And today we're going to craft some ZX die cards. Please let me share the stream and I hope I'm not messing up all the audio output. Uh, as you can see, I'm using a cheaper camera for my main camera and that's because uh, when I'm switching to my work desk, that will get the best quality camera. So this is it for now. Um, what you also might notice is that I'm using the Fifine microphone. Uh, I hope the audio quality is perfect, which probably isn't, but maybe almost perfect. Um, cook in some die cards. Live. 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 How to DIY. How to, what, oh my god, did, did I really type how to that way? That wasn't supposed to happen, let's change that. That's just stupid. <laughs> how to, uh, how, how can I change that, okay. That's stupid. How to, come on Ben, learn to type English. How to DIY a ZX die card. I'm not sure what how that happened. <laughs> uh, no, actually it says how to in the correct way, so that's good. Uh, let's sh share the stream because I like spamming. Um, society, we have a society. We have a, a Sinclair Society and we have a Dutch Sinclair Association, so that's quite nice. All right. I hope it really will uh, update the the title <coughs> because in uh, Facebook it still says Hoto, Hoto. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. I didn't have uh, any alcohol today yet, so <clears throat> that can be the cause of it. Cooking some die cards. It still doesn't say how to. It still says hoto. I'm not sure why. Hey, good afternoon, Ben. J Drive. Good afternoon. Uh, let me know if the audio is okay. I'm using a new microphone and uh, I really hope it, uh, this sound is the best so far. I think it is. I think it's a wise choice. I uh, ordered one of these. Hey Lewis, die cards, yes. I, I say cards with a T, but it's uh, just because we can, you know. Um, Alright. Still says die hoto but I don't think it will uh, update that but anyway <laughs> that's just silly maybe I will update the link again later on I hope it will uh, I will fix it not at this moment maybe if I visit Facebook again let's try uh, will it get the link no it still says hoto does it say Hodo with you or does it say uh, how to, uh, as it should be? Because I was messing it up. Let me know, please. Not sure what happened there. You're missing the two transistors. How can that be? How can that be? Uh, did you. Uh, Get the board separately, maybe, and uh, order the part yourself. And of course, you can do that. All right, um, let's uh, add some uh, background music. Uh, it shouldn't be too loud because I set the volume to minus 14 OBS. Oh, we got a nice bass sound to start with. All right. So, uh, my Replay uh, video shows how to uh, like it should. That's good. Okay, nice. Okay, so it's fixed there. It's just not fixed on Facebook. But uh, that can happen. People will uh, people will let me know. I made a typo. It still says Hoto. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Anyway. Okay, 
Uh, I think we're set up. Hey, Steve. Good afternoon, man. These are yours, man. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm keeping well, yeah. I hope you uh, you keep well as well. And everyone else, of course. Um, I guess most many of you are uh, back to work. I guess I'm not sure, of course. I assume. Um, but maybe uh, you're still at home for some reason um, because of the crisis. I don't know. Um, I hope uh, that will be solved soon. But if you want to talk about it, you can. Uh, let me see. I think uh, we're we're ready for everything now. Um, uh, let's see if I can see OBS and including the chat. That would be nice. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Okay, so let's get to the work disk here. It's a bit dark, I think. Maybe I should up the lighting a bit here. Oh wait, uh, just uh, I will switch on the soldering iron, and uh, that that will solve itself, I think. Uh, I got two uh, cameras only because the third one is downstairs because uh, um, it's used quite a lot for things like school and other stuff. Uh, so um, I only have two, so I do not have one for the, the desk corner behind me. I'm over here, but oh, oh damn. Can be those can still be closed in some countries. Uh, they're open here, but with a couple of uh, weeks uh, where you only could in go in by yourself without kids and so, and every uh, cart was cleaned with alcohol and you know. Um, but now uh, it seems that most supermarkets are just leaving that up to the customers who come who come in uh, to clean the the handles and so and. Uh, things are seem to get back to normal a bit, but other, um, of course many people uh, do not want to take care of lots of thing, things. So, uh, well, we'll see how it goes in Holland, but in the Netherlands. Sorry, I must say the Netherlands nowadays. Okay, so we got some more light. I think this is a lot better. Uh, this is actually a LED lighting light that is shining on here, and, and the problem is it's not diffuse. So. Even put on a filter, um, just to print it on transparent uh, f film, um, some dot effect which diffuses the light a bit, but maybe not enough. Uh, we'll see. These are uh, actually the boards from JLC PCB, so why not uh, kick off with a small commercial here? This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, our preferred board supplier. JLC PCB offers very good quality printed circuit boards, and they also offer SMT assembly and stencil manufacturing services. I especially love these black boards, as is quite obvious from this footage. Also, the matte finish just makes them look gorgeous. And because of that finish, the tracks on these boards are actually quite visible. JLC PCB has an awesome website. Their software will automatically detect your board dimensions and show a preview of the board in any color and finish you like. JLC PCB has very competitive prices. We always have very good experiences with JLC PCB. So get over to their website and order your boards at JLC PCB now. Link in the video description. All right, so that's done. Uh, th this helps me to get more uh, sponsors in the future. Uh, okay, let's uh, start it off. I have a build guide here. Uh, I always use build guides like these. I make them myself, of course. Uh, and these uh, help me to speed up the process because uh, I, I, I should not waste any time because there's so, so much to do still. Um, so I think at this moment I still have over 150 orders and they're still coming in. So no time to waste. Let's get it started. So as always, uh, th these are, by the way, these are for the DIY kits. And you can see that these are for the DIY kits because this is the newest version. And I'm still, I still have uh, five or so of the, uh, the version with a small bug that needs to be modified. And th these, th those are uh, these ones here that I will assemble myself for the people that want to buy an assembled ZX Dia card. Um, you can see so that this is the newest version by this transistor here. So it is an SMD transistor instead of the uh, Fruel one. Um, I will get to questions in a moment. Uh, just start off with some soldering here. Let me know if anything, everything is fine with the audio. If there's anything wrong, please tell me. Please tell me I'm stupid. If so, because I make mistakes. 
So uh, anyway, this is just a. Uh, some sometimes I call this the boring stuff. Otherwise, uh, but people seem to like um, me doing this, <laughs> which is uh, quite um, understandable because. Uh, who doesn't like seeing someone else doing the hard work, you know? <laughs> and so this is just part of my work, and I don't, uh, I don't hate it. I, it's just uh, um, sometimes I wish it could be more efficient. That's the only thing. If I should make thousand of these, I make thousand of these, and I uh, believe it or not, I made thousand uh, pieces of some products already. It's not a lie. Like the first DFMC, enjoy. Um, boards. I make, made fifteen hundred of them. I even they still have the number serial number fifteen hundred and uh, stored to offer someday at eBay when I have the time. So if someone would be interested in serial number fifteen hundred of the first DFMC and Joy series, I still have it. Um, all right, it's the last one I made. Uh, really, the last one. So serial number fifteen hundred was actually the last I made of those. Okay, let's get it going. Uh, C7, 10 nanofarads. Oh, I should ch exchange some boxes here because I need this one and it's not on top. So let's get a couple of those 10 nanofarads here. Sorry for my arm. I know it's hairy. Um, let's put it over here. Yeah, it's ther <laughs> therapeutic, I know. Uh, I like uh, seeing uh, Lewis Rossman, for example, because uh, his videos are uh, full of tech stuff, you know. And and still quite easy, because he, uh, he likes to repair the water-damaged uh, MacBooks. Um, because you can see where the corrosion is uh, most of the time, which, which is uh, cool. I wish I could uh, do MacBooks as well. Um, Lewis, nice to hear you're still working. Uh, can I use a 27010 EEPROM instead of a 27040? Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how the ROM is built up. I know there only a small part of the uh, EEPROM is the actual dark card ROM, um, but you have to, you, you just have to check uh, where the die card ROM is stored at this moment and see if that can be stored on the O10 uh, in a way that um, the missing address lines on the O10 uh, are not needed. But um, the 27040 is easy to, to obtain, so just check um, AliExpress or eBay. Um, I got loads of them. I get, get in, I, get, I get them in by 50 or 100. Would you be able to offer a kit version of this with the SMD components pre-soldered? Uh, well, that's exactly what you can find in uh, zxspectrum.shop. So yeah, it's a kit version uh, with the SMD components pre-soldered and all the frugal components you can do yourself. And if you still um, don't like to do that, you can uh, order a assembled one if you want to. So both are available. Right. I didn't expect ten, uh, 11 people to be uh, to watch this live. I didn't. I thought um, maybe only one or two because everyone is working. But if you're working from home, like like I do, of course, then
Okay. One, two test. I think it works. This is better. <laughs> okay. I think it. I think it is. I see the microphone volume uh, working again, but the LED is red in this moment. So. <laughs> Not sure what's happened and what the receiver is doing, but I think you can hear me now. Yay! Okay, so the receiver battery died, and I think I should create a, a DC input on the, on the receiver because it's battery powered for some reason. <laughs> I had a scene on my live show uh, um, scene set, uh, but I don't have that scene here. So technical difficulties scene. But we'll uh, we'll solve that later on. So it was not a transmitter. It was actually a receiver that uh, that didn't work. Uh, so I hope the battery will last longer next time. I'm not sure why these ones uh, were empty quite quickly, but maybe they weren't new. So. We'll have to keep an eye on it, but um, that's, a, that's a good thing of audience, <laughs> people will tell me anyway. Okay, let's put this back here. I don't want it to be in the way, it's still working is it? Yeah. Alright. Ouch. So it's quite a, I think it's, this is quite a, a semi-professional setup, if the batteries work of course. Let's get back to the BSS 84s. You should have a loopback monitor lo low down. Stop feedback. You should have a loopback monitor. Stop feedback. I don't know uh, exactly what you mean, Steve. Explain, please. Oops, this was six. Maybe I can. Um, no, I, I can't. I, I wanted to say I can maybe can move this, the mixer a bit to another place where I can see it clear, more clear. But fold back, fold back. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Q1, Q3, and Q7. Oops. How often uh, should I do live streams, guys? Let me know. And everyone knows that I wish I can could do more, but sometimes there are just some some of the days that it's really just uh, trying to work in between uh, getting. Uh, Distracted by the kids and so you know, and that's quite hard. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, hmm, maybe some in-ear thing. Is that what you mean, uh, Steve? That could be an idea. But then we get loads of cables. I might, uh, I might uh, think of that. It's, uh, it might be a good idea. But I don't want to get connected to Gables again, and I can imagine that some uh, adding some wireless equipment can interfere with uh, the microphone, you know, so I have to be careful with that. I'm not a mu musician. Um, well, maybe that's not completely true. Um, I do play laser harp, and I was actually looking at some uh, Yamaha uh, keyboards yesterday for my daughter, and she has a guitar, which I bought for her, so... So maybe maybe I'm a bit into music, but uh, I don't have the time I I would like to have to actually get more into music and play something properly. But maybe I will get into uh, playing a keyboard again, all in time. 
The thing is that she won she wanted to get some uh, some rabbits. And at this moment it's quite hard to obtain some because of lockdowns and we found some uh, animals with the coronavirus in Holland, so people are quite uh, careful at this moment. Okay, B BSS 138, so those are here. I would just, uh, I actually would use uh, the, the main audio output of my amplifier. Uh, w where everything is mixed into. Uh, wait, I'm not sure if that will work because uh, the microphone is muted, so I, I cannot hear myself through OBS by default. Mm. I have to think of that a bit more, but later on. And then, uh, as you say, uh, maybe it's uh, good enough to just get the output of the mixer with the microphones. Uh, could be odd to hear myself there, though. <laughs> And uh, maybe there's a slight delay, I'm not sure. Ah, well, these are analog, so I don't think so. I don't think so, actually. I think these are quite direct. Okay, let's see. We we'll just need a 1G66 chip on the left. So it's a single gate uh, chip here last part and then we can uh, finish all the soldering of all the parts which is not done yet oh i really would like some coffee by the way i will ask my wife in a moment i didn't sleep that much today tonight uh, because I, I woke up at oh what just happened uh yep it still works i woke up uh, at five o'clock or something and uh when I wake up, uh, I'm, I'm someone who jumps, who likes to jump out of my bed uh, with or without energy. Oh my god, oh no! I, had a, I have a problem here. I only have one of these. Oh, the cabinet is empty. Um, I will get some from the pick and place machine. It's not the best way, I know, but... Because I have to calibrate the pick and place then again. But I need some, uh, some of these chips. I should have ordered them. Maybe I will in a moment. Stupid, I didn't think of that. And to get them from the pick and place machine means to um, forward the, the tape where they're on. Oh, they're falling off. That's painful. Uh, that's painful. It's adding extra time here. And because that's because I um, opened up the tape for about six of them, which I shouldn't have done. I should have picked them one by one. Anyway, let's see what happens. Is the audio still uh, perfect when I move like this? Because um, I wonder if there's any uh, analog disturbance when I do that. Okay, I think I got enough for these now. Oh, it's still working. Um, yeah, I think it's almost a minute, Steve, the delay. It's true. Oh, there's a delay when you type it in. Okay. I haven't heard about that. I'm not sure if I can do anything about it. I haven't changed any settings in uh, uh, YouTube uh, Studio. So as far as I know, it's the same as always. Blame Google. So I might need a couple more, but I'm not sure. Maybe one or two. To also finish the the ones that I'm going to assemble. But we'll see if I might have enough now. So there are some exciting things going on. I actually. Uh, got the RGB, ZX RGB interface out of the boxes yesterday, uh, which at this moment is uh, on a development setup with a specky breadboard. Uh, so that's the interface that enables you to um, control addressable RGB LED strips, LED strips. 
which is quite fun to do, that's one, and secondly, um, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a nice way of, uh, well, uh, let's say differently, I want to get to a version of the rainbow LED case, the Spectrum rainbow LED case, with a restable RGB, and I think I'm about to do that, uh, because um, it's not that hard. Uh, if you uh, at this moment I'm so, uh, assembling um, RGB uh, LED strips with fixed colors, but why not replace that with the um, trustable strips? Of course, the mounting of the, the holes that I need to drill are different, um, but it's not the biggest problem. Um, so I'm going to do that in a week or two, I think. Uh, but uh, the reason I got the project out of the boxes again is my sister is getting a... How do you call it in English? It's not getting married, but it's a contract, you know? Um, uh, let, me, let me check how they call how does it pronounce in English, because I have no idea. I think it's a... Uh, what? Co cohabitation? Cohabitation? <laughs> the first thing I've seen, I've seen that. Um, so, anyway, it's, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not the same as getting married, but almost. And uh, I want to get a, her a present. Uh, of course, uh, I'm a geek, and she knows that. So I'm going to give her a ZX Spectrum, uh, fixed on the back of a wooden plate, wood plate, uh, painted black. And at the other side, there will be the R um, addressable RGB LEDs. Um, so the strips cut in pieces, and it will... Uh, make their initials uh, with a heart in between. <laughs> and I'm going to create some uh, autom automatically booting um, uh, software that will show some cool effects with their initials and a heart. And so you just have to power it on. Uh, maybe I will get a Harkin board, not sure. Anyway, um, uh, that's what I wanted to do with it. And I have to get it ready in a week because it's a uh, in just over a week so. Um, let's see, the layers on YouTube, I'm sure we can cope. Um, Alright, uh, Ben, which temperature temperature do you use for soldering fine pitch chips? Uh, depends on the solder I use, so I have uh, leaded and lead free. And for the DIY kits everyone uses leaded, so I'm using leaded as well. And then I put my soldering iron at about 350-360 degrees Celsius. Uh, but for lead, leaded, uh, sorry, lead free solder I use uh, up to 400 and maybe even more if I'm doing, for example, edge connectors with the lead-free solder to speed up the process. It's good to have 410 or 415. Uh, but the problem is, I'd, I'm not sure if these Willer, if this, this, these cheap Willer or other brand soldering irons are uh, calibrated. So this is just the temperature that I put it on, and I just always say uh, use the temperature that works best for your solder and your uh, soldering iron and setup. Um, because uh, it can be different. Uh, I'm, I'm checking if I can see anything, any setting for chatting, but I don't see anything I can, can change about that. There's no delay. I, I can add a delay. I'm not sure for what. Oh, I forgot to uh, enable uh, subtitles, but anyway, closed captioning. I don't think I can change it. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I have no idea. Anyway, let's get back. Oh, where is my... Oh, there. Sure. Um... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Jay, I wonder if that's true, because... I think on uh, other streams, like the Bite Like week sh Weekly Show, the chat has uh, been put more di directly on the uh, on screen. So, not sure what, uh, what the difference is. Um, strange. Alright. Oh, sorry for uh, touching the desk. It's not the most stable desk. Maybe it will uh, it will change maybe in the future. We, who who knows? You know. Okay, let's get this going. 
So I get some flux here. I'm re really using a lot of these uh, flux pens, which I like a lot. They're easier than uh, using a uh, flux gel. I'm using the Antec flux if I need to do other stuff. But for these purposes, this is uh, the best solution, if you ask me. The quite uh, the, the price of these are increasing, by the way. They, they were just uh, one euro each in the past, but nowadays they're two and a half, something like that. Not sure why. Right, so this one is done. I think it is all for uh, getting the DIY board ready. Let me check. Yeah, I think so. So then we can get some anti static bags. Let me check. Yep. 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 Two more. I actually do clean uh, other interfaces nowadays with the GLC PCB boards because these are embedded and you see the flux residue quite a lot better than on the, the old boards I got from C Technology. Um, but because people need still need to solder in all the extra parts, there's no need to clean up the flux at this moment. Um, I was looking for uh, some more of the RGB LED strip, when I, which I was just talking about, uh, because uh, the piece I have in, in stock I'm going to use for my uh, sister's present. Um, but it seems that the, the, the type I'm using that works with the Spectrum is not sold that much. Actually, you had to buy it from AliExpress. I, I prefer buying it from eBay, but couldn't uh, do that this time. And uh, the reason uh, I'm using this one is that I need the strips, the LED strips, with a separate clock input because the spectrum isn't fast enough to uh, supply uh, the signal in 800 kilohertz, um, which the uh, the cheapest uh, addressable RGB strips use. So I'm using the one with the separate clock input and I have two types of those. So the WS2801, WS2801. And I have the CX2801 or 2802, I think. Um, and the CX is almost the same. It also has the, the clock input like the WS has. But the difference is that the, those CX2802 strips do not have um, the chips, the chips are actually integrated into the um, LED uh, LEDs themselves, uh, which is quite cool to see because there's a really tiny chip within the LED. <laughs> so you get the LED with, uh, of course, three LEDs inside, and then the chip is integrated inside that, very tiny. And because it's uh, visible from the outside, you can actually see the chip. Uh, I, should, I, should, I should show you, but maybe we'll do it in another video. Um, and the, the thing is that I can use the CX2802s, but the WS2801s, which should be function about the same, uh, didn't didn't work when I tested them uh, yesterday or did it before. I'm not sure. Do so many things. So uh, I wonder what a, what a, that was. Uh, what the reason of that was. Uh, so to make sure I can use them now, just order the same type. Because, uh, as I said in the last weekly show, <coughs> I am going to change the set a bit here. And I wanted to have uh, RGB strips in the new, uh, in the new shelves and cabinets. Um, so I, I ordered... I al already have the, the cabinets um, in stock. I get, got them from IKEA. <coughs> and I'm going to uh, assemble the LED strips once they arrive. And again, those LED strips will be controlled by ZX Spectrum. 
and I can really show anything I want to. Uh, anything I want, I mean. Uh, so <coughs> I can just show spectrum colors, but I can also show uh, stars and, and any other effect that you can imagine with the strips. It's, it's quite cool. <coughs> so uh, I will show you once it's done. And I think it will take a week or three because strips need to arrive. Uh, are you making kits? Kits, yes, these are for the kits, and uh, the, these are the all aboard version with the uh, modification that uh, required. I'm going to use for assembled ones, making myself. Uh, yeah, so these are for the kits. Oh, uh, I'm forgetting something. That's stupid. Especially when Steve is watching, because there will be a serial number on these. And uh, I will I will show you I'm not I'm not uh, fooling you, Steve, because I don't want to fool anyone. <coughs> because the ones I have here already have the uh, serial number on them. So I think the last one is 123. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Die cards. Die cards. Where is the die card serial number? <coughs> oh here. Oh no, 128 already, so I sold more uh, than this one. So 128 is the last serial number. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> Where's my voice? What happened to my voice? I have to get these out, because the uh, serial number needs to be added. We'll do that in a minute. <coughs> And uh, I tell Steve exactly how many uh, I make of these. That's no secret. The only reason I'm a, I'm a bit cautious with um, sharing all the serial numbers with everyone is competition. Some people are way too jealous, so I don't share everything. I have a development group with some people in there, like Steve, and I share a lot of information there, but I don't share everything with everyone. Right. QC check, okay. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes I uh, make sure that I'm using the correct um, capacitor by measuring it. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think it won't work because it's in circuit. Let me check. <clears throat> ah, come on. Oh, it's 10. 10.5. 10. <clears throat> 10. It's good enough. I can need some water, sorry. Maybe I should put down the, the mic for a second so I can clear my throat. Ah, that's better. Okay. I think the compressor, uh, the software compressor does its uh, job quite nicely as well. So a compressor is a piece of a circuit or a piece of software that um, will make sure that the output volume is about the same. So if I'm not, uh, just whispering or if I'm screaming, it will not go over a certain volume level, uh, which is great. So uh, people won't uh, get any uh, hearing damage when I'm screaming. And another one, another one done. And the last one of these. I, I actually wonder what uh, people are, are doing for work. Of course, from, from some people I know, 
<coughs> so if you want to share some of it, if you if you're allowed to, of course, let me know what you're doing. I think it's interesting. And I think I uh, did ask how often uh, I, I should do some live streams. So what do you think, guys? How often should I do live streams? Should I be a re real YouTuber and uh, do it every day? I still uh, can uh, install a door here in the Bite Light headquarters. There's no door, <laughs> but I could, which will help. Uh, uh, which will help getting keeping noise outside although I have a window open at the moment so so the light is, it went off because I put the soldering iron uh, off I want to add some serial numbers Yeah, it's the new one, and the reason I'm using the Weller is uh, because of the, the cheap Chinese one uh, didn't have enough power for uh, soldering on ground planes, for example. So, uh, the Weller it really is a piece of garbage. Don't buy it. It's a cheap Weller from 150 euro, and cheap is uh, relative, of course, because uh, for a Chinese soldering iron, 150 euro is quite a lot of money, but for a Weller, it's uh, it's not expensive, and because Weller is a well-known brand, I thought, well, why not buy a Weller for that price? And it's a piece of shit. So don't buy it. Buy a Hecko or something. Uh, it, it's really falling apart. So I'm, I'm going to show you again. Uh, so this is uh, almost gone now. Uh, I'm using this uh, for, what is it, half a year or something? And you can see the amount of uh, um, super glue I've been using to keep this part uh, um, in one piece. But I cannot touch it at the moment because it's still hot. Uh, but it's, the, the plastic is just not strong enough to keep the metal parts in. So it's really uh, not de designed well. It's uh, why do they sell this? Why do, they, do why do brands do this to themselves? You know, garbage. Why do they, don't they just stick with quality? They, they, of course, the, the only reason is that they want to uh, get along with the competition, and so they also make some cheaper ones. Uh, and there are some uh, well-known problems with uh, weather, uh, for example, the, the quality of the cheap ones nowadays, but also that they don't have any fuse inside some of the models, uh, which makes it very um, dangerous to use them. Um, and someone showed that there wasn't a fuse because he was connecting a 110 volt version to a 230 volt um, mains uh, output um, and it just started smoking and still kept working without any um, automatically sh anything sh shutting up so it's ridiculous and they're just doing it because they want to sell more stuff they don't think of safety and so you know they still say their equipment is safe. Well, I don't think so. It's just a waste of money. I'm not buying anything from them again. And of course they have the, the professional series and I guess those will be still fine. But they shouldn't s uh, sell cheaper models if the, garbage, the, the quality is just uh, no good at all. A company like what I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, that's their fault. I'm not buying anything from them ever again. Okay, so these are... Uh, I've, I've got eight uh, boards for the kits now. So I can complete the eight kits. Yeah, Peter, I didn't know. Uh, because, uh, again... Uh, when you want to buy something like a soldering iron and you have good experience with the older weathers, but you want some uh, one model with a variable temperature, um, you think 
spying the weather is still a good thing to do. But it was not. So these are 2.15s I think, yeah, 2.15. The older ones with the... Uh, which need, requires the small modification. I have three of the boards left. I will not use them at this moment. I just want to get going with the... Uh, assembled boards. Because I have more things to do today. So we're going to finish these three completely. Uh, yeah, Steve, exactly. Um, but they don't understand that once they sell this shitty quality they're losing customers they will never come back to them uh, and if they would have sold something for for some for example 200 euro or 175 or something i think many people would would buy a weller for 175 if the quality was uh more decent than these ones but they uh they just ruined it and I'm just going to say this on live streams, you know, that's what happens. So the summer holidays are uh, about to happen. Uh, my son has his last week at school now, which is very, very odd because uh, uh, next year is going to another school. And so the, so saying goodbye should be something like a party or so, but they can do that. So it, it's, they just um, planned 10 minute um, talks with their uh, mentors and that's all. It's really, really sad, it's really odd, but I think it's a good thing that it's done that way still. Uh, okay, no, I need these ones here. Oh, 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 look at all the parts. Look at all the parts. Never ending stock of parts. Oh, um, I have three of these, so I need nine. I got two. <laughs> need nine. Give me more. How many are here? Five, so we have seven. Two more, please. Thank you very much. So I cut these by uh, pieces of ten, but sometimes you need these odd numbers. Anyway, and three of the other parts, but that's for another moment. Alrighty. So we got three, four. And nine. Oh, oh, sorry. I bumped my soldering iron. I shouldn't do that. So, uh, on these uh, older boards, I need to piggyback one of these chips. I will show you in a minute. It's not the, the most difficult thing to do. I really love these uh, ZX AAA uh, music clips on YouTube with the ZX Spectrum music. The guy uh, makes quite a lot of these. I think it's from Russia. This uh, video is five hours, so I do not have to worry uh, of the, the video um, cutting out when I'm still uh, streaming, which is a good thing. And there are more of these like uh, free hours and, and, and such.
Okay, so the chips must be upside down and to be able to do it quite easily, I will push the two legs. Oh, and it jumped away. Let's do it better. That's one. Let's see where the third one went. It's here. Alrighty. Yep. So as you can see, that one is uh, piggybacked to the other one. It's a bit, a bit hard to see with the lighting on it, but you can see it, I think. So here are those two there. All right. Next. I still should um, disable all my notifications in uh, Chrome because when you're live streaming it's very distracting getting in notifications but I wish I could uh, I wish there was a function where you could do that temporarily for let's say till the end of the stream or something or for a couple of hours and I haven't found an option yet I wish uh, OBS could help me with it uh, I, I guess there it's, it's impossible to control Chrome from OBS. I don't know, but I haven't found an option to just say to suspend the notifications for a while. But that would be the best. But we'll see. Let's get some wires. So I'm using, uh, as always, these. Uh, Wires from 80 pin uh, IDE cables. These are perfect for this purpose. And I think it was the lowest lag. I'm not sure. Do I have it written down? Nope. I think it was this one. I'm just going to guess it was this one. Or can't it be this one? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> let me check. Uh, let me check the manual for the fix kits. I have it in the manual. Uh, interfaces and add-ons, Xenix die cards, fix kits, documentation, fix, uh, include with fix kits. Yep, so I think it was the lowest one. Let me check. Yeah, um, it's totally good. Totally good. Who's, uh, who's talking to me on Facebook? Many people are so many messages to reply to. Just a quick check. I don't know. Uh, okay. Nice. Let's get back. I need coffee. I'm going to order some coffee. Shall I send a WhatsApp or shall I just call my wife by intercom? Yeah, yeah. All right. See if she gets the message. I think so. I think so. 
All right. So this is the, the small fix that we need to do. So I'm using leaded solar at this moment and I always uh, wash my hands afterwards for a flea because lead is uh, toxic. It's important to be careful with that. Okay, one fix is done. Guys, 15 people are watching. Shouldn't you guys be uh, working? I'm just joking. You can watch the stream as much as you like. Right. And one more. Who has seen the Minecraft uh, Spectrum yesterday or the day before? I'm not sure. I lost count. Who has seen the Minecraft ZX Spectrum? And I, uh, if, if I find the time, so if I'm bored or something, <laughs> um, I will continue and add a ZX Spectrum Plus, of course, the next one. And then uh, the Toast Rack and the Plus 2. And also I need to go backwards, so I need to add a ZX81 and a ZX80. Who has seen that? just a lot of fun to make those. It's not important, but it's just fun. <laughs> ah, nice. That's a good one, Steve. And you know, I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not blaming anyone if he's not working. Believe me. Oh, I should have sold this one on already. And I can see uh, that many people still have uh, loads of times, if you can call that. Because uh, I still get in quite a lot of orders. Which is good, but still have a huge backlog. So I need to keep it going. Let's get the DSS-138. Are you going to test any of the fully built cards on stream? Uh, well, if you want me to, then I can do that. The only problem is, as I said, I don't have the third camera here. So I might need to be creative in how to test it. Maybe I will just get a ZX Spectrum and power it on without any uh, video output and just show that the die cards uh, boot up. The beep, you know, so that's a good thing.
All right. Nice bet. What better you can, can you do than watch a ZX Spectrum live stream in the, in your in your break? Okay, I know know something better than uh, than that. You can uh, you can visit a web shop like ZX Spectrum shop in your break and uh, spend some money there. <laughs> I still have to uh, add the mugs. There's so much things to do, so many things. Anyway, okay, let's get it going with the other parts then. Let's get the tiny, these tiny NE555s, which are called LM555s. These are lovely, tiny chips. I love tiny chips. I still also have to do a, a separate video of uh, how to use the die card. Uh, I haven't gotten into that. Um, of course, I've used it a couple of times already on live streams for doing repairs. Um, but just showing all of its features and some how to's could be useful. Um, and I'm not going to tell uh, about the Easter eggs and them. I'm not going to talk about it on live stream because I'm not allowed to. I actually didn't know there were Easter eggs in them, so I'm not going to tell about tell anyone about that. But if you're interested in that, you just have to uh, look it up somewhere on Facebook or so, or ask, ask Steve. Steve can talk about it. But I'm not allowed to talk about the uh, Easter eggs in the die card software. Uh, sorry, not the software, but in the ROM. It's actually not in the die card software. It doesn't, ha it doesn't have anything to do with the die card. Um, oh, ah, I messed it up. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Ouch. So don't ask me about Easter eggs in the die card. Don't ask me about those uh, ROM games and how to enable them. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to talk about how to play those ROM games in your die card. Uh, did I do that wisely? Just let me check because I just put back some chips and I want to make sure, 100% sure that these are the same times. Anyway, let me check. These are the KB6s. Oh, it's hard to see. I need, I need light. K3Bs. Are these the same? Yeah, they are. Right. <laughs> All right, Steve. Well, I was I was hoping to count on you, but okay. Then uh, people have to find out differently. I'm sorry, guys. We cannot help you with the Easter eggs in the die card. We're not going to tell you that there are Easter eggs in the die card. Who wants Easter eggs in uh, ZX Spectrum interfaces anyway? Who likes surprises anyway? I don't think uh, ZX Spectrum uses like surprises, so I don't think they're interested in Easter eggs. Maybe they like chocolate, but not Easter eggs. Uh, 
R27, what was that? It was a one mega ohm. One mega ohm. Okay, we need three of those. Mega ohm. Because kilo is not enough. And now some 100 kilo ohms. And these do not count because they're not mega. Fortunately, uh, because I'm not able to show you that I can test them on screen with the ZX Spectrum, I, I can also not show you the Easter eggs, so that's fortunate because I'm not allowed to. I promise I will stop talking about it. I'm just not saying when. Why do we get so many out? I only need six. I got ten of these. That's stupid. Anyway. This cost at least a cent each. But even thinking about it is more co costing more than the parts itself, so let's not think about it. Why do we get so many messages? What's this? Oh, co coffee. It's a picture of coffee. So I actually did get coffee in the meantime. Let me get a coffee because I need to. Ah, coffee. Lovely coffee. Bite light coffee. Bite light coffee. Bite the light coffee. Who loves the colors of these mugs? I like the colors. Isn't it great? And I uh, partially fixed my own coffee machine, or automated coffee machine. But I still think I need uh, to install a new grinder, which is quite expensive. Mmm. But... Ah, coffee is good. And it's finished. And that's how I drink coffee. Loads and loads of it. To keep me awake. Keep my keep myself mentally sane in insane times. Okay, almost uh, oh, almost all the SMD parts are on. Just need to finish this. <laughs> Marks will be uh, available soon, and I know marks are quite old-fashioned in web shops. I know, I know, I know, I know. But then again, uh, this is a retro computer channel, you know. So uh, with retro computers need uh, come, come with retro computers come nostalgic mugs and uh, VHS and analog microphones and you know that sort of thing. Right, one, one. It's too bad that I can't play uh, my favorite music in the background because YouTube um, and so, and it's not a, it's not YouTube anymore. It's a Twitch and all other. Uh, Platforms are also uh, being forced to make sure there's no copyrighted things going on there without the rightfully owners getting paid for it. But it's a, it's a bit uh, it's a bit quiet, and I'm not used to uh, 
to working without music and so, hence I'm talking so much. Um, usually I play uh, lots of music, a lot of uh, electronic music, Jean-Michel Jarre and trance music nowadays. And if I'm fed up with music, I play huge videos from several channels like uh, Linus Tech Tips, Steve from Gamers Nexus, Louis Rosman, uh, uh, Everyday Astronaut, Marcus House, uh, Al Jar, uh, Technology Connections, and lots more. And if I can't find any new videos, which happens a lot of time, you, you, maybe you can't imagine that, but I watch loads of videos. But then I'll check Netflix, and uh, uh, we're watching uh, The Floor is Lava at the moment. <laughs> And a new Titan show with uh, The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, with the kids, of course. And um, I'm now watching uh, Dark Season 3, which is quite cool. I love the series. It's quite uh, mystic, mystical. I love it. Um, right. Now, let's get to the through hole parts. Uh, let's get this box out of the way. Sorry for the bumping. Sorry. Sorry. So I need uh, an empty, an empty box here. Yep, yep, yep. This helps me. I, I, I see people uh, soldering on the on the desk or something. This is way more easy. Oh, oh! Don't throw it on the floor. I don't like throwing it on the floor. And I can do one at a time, but I can also do three at a time. Just need more of those uh, thingies. Got loads of them here, so let's get to the other side. Get two more. Because we can. If I uh, ever get my ZX, uh, sorry, ZX printer, my uh, 3D printer uh, set up completely, because it's, it's behind me, but uh, I don't have the time to get it um, ready and working. But maybe I can print some something that that helps me with doing this kind of work instead of these uh, things here, you know. All right, uh, this that was only the first part. Uh, let's get to the 330 ohm resistors. And believe it or not, uh, these are all uh, folded already. So for your ease, R1. So if you buy a DIY kit, you get these folded. Um, resistors and diodes and you know so I'm following the build guide and you can see it's quite simple just check in the values My hands are so big on the screen that I don't like that. I want to show you guys the boards, but my hands are closer to the camera, of course, so that's not that strange. <laughs> okay, sorry, Pat. Sorry I did it to you. But thank you, of course. So one of these kits is for you then, I guess. I'm not sure if you ordered the assembled one or the DIY. And I'm, I'm not yet there to tell people that I'm going to uh, um, sign the, the, the products I'm selling. <laughs> Maybe in the future, when I get famous. No, I'm just joking. Um, however, I do sign the rainbow LED uh, sets that I ship out, but I'm not signing them on the back because some people do not like that. I'm signing the inside so people can see my signature if they want to. Because that is just a piece of art and when it comes to art you're, you have to put on your signature of course. Let me show you what you will get, Pat, before uh, finishing these. So 
So um, in the back with the DIY kits are uh, the separately bagged parts. Oh, sorry, you can just do, do it this way. So uh, all of them, including the switches and rubber feet to get it horizontal when using it. I see sockets and the uh, chips will be on the other side, not done yet. And of course the board and the DIY manual, which I'm using at this moment, which is on here. And of course some strobe bubble, if I'm not forgetting it. Uh, I think this kit can be sent with uh, strobe bubbles because um, I only include strobe bubbles with the kits, or with the orders that um, do not... Um, where I have the, the, how do you call it? Uh, the margin in the weight. So if I'm sending something that's sent, sent by a standard mill and a party mill, then I cannot do that. Because adding a cookie will cost more to ship. <laughs> but not these die cards. I think. I have to check. Maybe I should add a question to every order. Do you have a gluten intolerance? So I know which stroke I will to include. The most important thing, many people do uh, order ZX Spectrum stuff with their strobe bubbles, so I'm not taking that lightly. shouldn't be in here, it should be here. Alright. Those were the 330 ohm resistors, I think. I think I got all of them. So let's get to the second value, which is 1k. And 1k is R1. No, oh, that's impossible. No, R4. I'm, I'm mistaken. So you can actually uh, use this video uh, to help you out if you are stuck somewhere in the DIY kits, but I don't think people will get stuck. Oh no! I don't have any 2K shoes. Why not? Where are those? Eh, I have to make them myself. Usually if my kits were dead. I will make just enough. I don't need that many, so it's okay. Uh, and then, uh, my kids like to help me out with these, so I'm not a... Uh, I'm not... Um, making misuse of them. All right, let's see if they will stay here. Yeah, they will. So I need, I think, 24 of these. Let's do that. Uh, which one? Yeah, I think this one. Oh, stop it. Don't drop on the floor, please. Stay there. Oh! Right. Sometimes I think I should just make a machine for this. It's cheaper. <laughs> cheaper than paying my kids now. Just joking. Um but I have uh, some stuff like um, preparing edge connectors and other other parts that need to be prepared, which I often think it would be f would be a big help if I um, could have the, some kind of simple machine for that. Can be that hard. I've never done it. Um, the, the thing that comes closest to do, to making an automated machine is. Uh, Set up with the uh, side. I don't know. Not, not sure what it's called. When, when I was uh, creating a V cut in the ZX HD boards, that came in without a V cut. So I did it myself and gave quite a lot of uh, dust 
but it saves so much time doing it doing it that way. So just uh, I made the, made a setup just to put uh, the ZXHD boards on it uh, over a plate, and the VCAT was done. So that it's the same way as they do it in, in China, you know. It's uh, semi-automated. You can also use a bandsaw, of course, for cutting the boards. But it's really a lot more work than creating a V-cut. What? Two times 4K4 apparel? No. What did I say, Steve? <laughs> I'm just bending the leads, yes. I always call I always say legs, but it's lead indeed. Oh, I dropped one again. All right, two K two for R thirteen. These ones here, the blue LEDs. Blue LEDs need a, a bit higher. Oh, I think I, ah, I bent them the wrong way. Ah, that's my fault. Okay, we will get it done. We will get this done. In just a second. So the pitch of these holes is one centimeter. So we have to uh, make these a bit smaller. My bad. Should have checked. Should have checked it. We get it done. Just some more work. Make the resistors. Did I say that? You know I'm Dutch, eh? <laughs> you know I'm Dutch. I'm just Dutch. And us Dutch people, we uh, we always have a strange way of pronouncing any English sentences. Though I, I do think in English sometimes. I have to correct myself when I'm thinking in English. It's because I'm online such a lot. And I sometimes feel I, I should have been born in the UK. But anyway, what can I do about it, you know? On the other hand, uh, the Netherlands have so many uh, modern things spread around, spread over uh, the whole country. And that's quite useful as well. So there's nothing I do not have um, in my neighborhood. So we have an IKEA. We have a, we we. I don't. I'm, I don't think there's anything I I could could need nearby than what I already have nearby. Sometimes I think uh, living in a city like Eindhoven is uh, it's, it's so busy here, man. The streets are f packed up with people and, you know, that's what I don't like about it, but anyway. Hey, Graham. Good afternoon, man. Welcome to the show. Steve, we, uh, we could have uh, just um, used dip packages with uh, resistors, like uh, like it's done on the Harkin boards. So uh, you got those 16-pin uh, uh, dip packages with eight resistors in them. That could speed up the process a bit. Of course, they're a bit more expensive, but not that much. But on the other hand, uh, when you do this, you know exactly what you're doing. So these are the resistors going in to get the LEDs up to the right brightness. And um, current. Oh, by the way, Steve, we still have to find out uh, something about a minus 5 volt. And uh, I think... 
Uh, it might have to do with the uh, super bright LEDs I've been using on the assembled boards. So with, a, with some people encountered that the minus five volt was um, disturbed a bit by uh, the ZX die card, and most likely it's because of the current going through the LED. So either I should um, add a resistor with a bigger value to limit the current, or just use another LED. I have to check. So I think the LEDs I'm using for the DIY kits are no problem at all because they are not super bright ones. But I also have some uh, completely transparent LEDs which I use for the assembled ones to uh, make sure those are used first. I still have to do some uh, checks myself to see what's going on. And I already checked uh, some of the die cards on some 48k boards, but I couldn't uh, couldn't create the problem myself with the first tests. But still, some people, one or two, uh, told me about it. If these were SMD, I wouldn't do them by hand. <laughs> Yeah, you're totally right, Steve. This is uh, for, for educational purpose. This is a lot better. That's why uh, I do like the ZX die cards. So I should just have to use the this uh, spacing here instead of this one. My bad. You see, it's not the, the biggest issue. So if you don't have a ZX die card yet, I would say don't delay, fix your ZX Spectrum with a ZX card, ZX die card today. <laughs> oh. To do with these because they're not correct. Okay, let's see if we can bend them back and then make them the correct size. Okay. Imagine uh, I would have asked my kids to do this and then all of them were would were would be the wrong size. Which which one was it? Huh? Oh of course. My bad. I don't need a uh, that yellow thingy. Uh, I think it's just doing it this way. That was the right size. That's all. My bad. Okay. So the last resistors and then we can get to the other parts. Let's see, uh, 10k, yeah, 10k, but even with 10k I need more. I need more. R3? Where's R3? There's R3. Oh, uh, hmm. Okay. I'm uh, thinking of something, but anyway, let's get it, get it going. Uh, R21, because I'm using the default um, resistor values at this moment, uh, I cannot use the uh, super bright LEDs, but anyway, we'll use the colored ones then. 
not a biggest issue. Uh, R22. Get a new. R23. Okay. Twenty four needs to be at three thirty. And twenty six, the last one here is a ten K. Okay. should have powered off my soldering iron in the meantime. I don't like to waste energy. But now we need it in a minute, so I'm not doing it now. I also uh, would like to have some solar panels in the future, but all on time, you know. So we need a couple of more 10 Ks. My desk is not a uh, um, completely flat. There's a work that my work desk comes towards me a bit, so uh, hence the parts roll off. It's a lot better than uh, having a flat desk, so I can move this around. I will show you. I can move it around. It's a setup the setup desk. How do you call it? I'm not sure how you call it. Because I'm Dutch. Lost in words. Lost in, lost in translation. Like Steve said. Right. One more and then we can solder the lemon. Great, great, very great.
right. We're getting there, so uh, we're about halfway now. I think next will be the IC sockets. And after that the LEDs. So I always uh, assemble parts, uh, go in uh, from thinnest to highest. That's the easiest. I will show you why in a minute. So who is soldering re uh, through hole resistors in in 2020? You don't see that dead often on YouTube. Brand new boards with through hole parts. It's crazy, don't you think? It's crazy. Yeah, I know. This is uh, always how I do it. If I can, uh, if I can reach them from the top, it's uh, the easiest way of doing it. Otherwise, uh, the parts fall off. You know, you have to think of something like that. But I have to uh, flip the board for the IC sockets. But I have a, a way of doing that as well. I will show you. There's no reason uh, why you should solve them from the bottom only. Maybe for aesthetics because it looks better. But I always think of, I want to think of the most efficient way of doing it. You know, uh, pads, through hole pads are also always soldered, uh, connected from the top to the bottom with uh, through hole uh, met, uh, metallizing. I'm not sure what you call it. Uh, so you can just solder it on the top. <laughs> Set one Adri SBC. I'm not sure what that is. Sounds cool. Two and a half hours is a lot of work. Though I did uh, four Hardikin boards at once at a time when I sold that many, with the help of my wife, by the way, and uh, my daughter was even helping with putting in parts. So I, it took me five hours or six hours doing four of them, with the help of them, of course. All right. I'm not sure if you can see uh, the soldering quality, um, but I, I always think it must look good as well. So not only uh, create a good connection, but I want to uh, show people that it's quality work as well as uh, just seeing that it works, you know? All right. Now we're cutting the parts off, the leads. There's no way of doing this an easier way, as far as I know. So it's just cutting, 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 and cutting. Talking about cutting. Yesterday I was uh, installing a new blade in my uh, blade saw machine. It took me uh, over an hour. These machines are not that easy to uh, to use because uh, uh, installing a new blade comes with some uh, calibration of some other mechanical parts. And I didn't know that there was a, a wheel on the back of the machine to 
uh, get the new blade working properly. Uh, found it out after uh, trying it for uh, over half an hour. <laughs> so uh, it's the first time I used that uh, wheel. <laughs> it was quite quite uh, annoying, but anyway, it's finished. So the new blade is installed. Oh cool. Next generation Z180. This is Z180 uh, an official uh, Zilog part number. And is it 8 bit or 16 bit? I guess 8. I wonder if uh, CPM will only run on uh, 8 bit machines. I don't think so, but who knows. I should look up a, <coughs> an in-depth story uh, video about CPM. I'm really curious how it uh, came to life and <coughs> how wide, widely it was used. I've used it a couple of times, but uh, not that much. Mainly because it doesn't run on the Spectrum except for the plus three. As far as I know. Okay, this needs takes some time, I know. Sorry for that. We're getting there. So uh, next is uh, the sockets, I think. Yeah. After that, the uh, LEDs, then the capacitors connector and then we're done. Right. Phew. That's work quite a, quite a lot. Okay, let's get some parts out here because most of uh, the remaining stuff I can do uh, without needing this build guide here. <laughs> I think that's all from this box. Um, I will keep it open for just a bit longer. Let's get to the sockets. I got a muscat from there uh, today. Uh, my daughter asked me if I could uh, take a take a look on on, uh, on uh, this one here. Can I put it somewhere where you can see it? <laughs> Maybe here? Let's see. Oh. oh, I'm messing it up. So it's here now. So it's my daughter's. I hope she doesn't see this because otherwise she will get mad, I think. Uh, maybe my wife has a scream enabled downstairs, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my daughter is still at school, so that's a good thing in uh, this case. Right. Um, nice. About a Z180. Okay, sockets. So we need a 20 pin and 32 I already got. So nine of these. Yeah, well, nice. Um, and one 14 and one 16.
loads of those. Look, look at this bag here. Loads of those. And that's it, I think. Yep. 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 Oh, there's one leg left here. I didn't notice. Oh, uh, I'm making a mess. Just a second, guys. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay. Okay, the way I put in the sockets is... Uh, okay, I, w I should start with 20 pin and I have a reason for that. You can do it the hard way, you can do it the easy way. And I always like doing it the easy way. So. Now if I turn this around. Properly. Nothing will happen. Look, look, I can just put it around without any problem. Uh, the only thing I, I tend to do is to put something on the end here to keep it uh, horizontal, just for a bit of help. And that's all. Because I'm lazy. So and now we do uh, speed soldering. Meep meep. And the next one. So if you are a coyote, you won't catch me. Because I'm quick. Very quick. This is the quickest way of soldering in a chip socket. And that's the good thing about uh, using a soldering iron with 75 watts of power. Next. So I can also use my hand instead of the tool because my hands are agile enough. And let's do the meep meep thing again. Oh. Right, that's two, one more, mind the notches to the left, in this case, that sounded a bit like Bob Ross, and now we put some paint on here, and a little bit of clouds there, and some mountains here. But I don't have his hair, so I really hate his programs. Ugh. Painting with Bob Ross. Oh my god. It's still on television here in the Netherlands. Sorry if you like Bob Ross. Um, you're, you're allowed to, it's just I don't like it. I hope I'm not insulting anyone. Maybe later when I'm 80 years old, I like painting, I don't know. Not now. Okay, and uh, because the 32 socket is uh, just a bit to the right, I'm doing that um, after the 20 pin sockets. So only two and end. So, and now I can leave it this way and I can do a meep meep thing again. And done. Oh, solder bridge, solder blob. And this one. Yep. So uh, doing it this way doesn't take too much time. Oh, if you want to know how, uh, how he's called, he's called Snowy. 
again it's my daughter's, I didn't think of his name. Snowy. So say hello to Snowy. Snowy the Ice Tiger. Uh, it's the cutest stuffed animal we have here in uh, Bite Light headquarters. My kids got more. Right. Okay, now the last two, and I, I'm not doing a. I'm not fooling around, I just put it in and solder it in and ready, and it's done. And if you like uh, doing DIY kits and you have more time than I have, then please take your time. No one is saying hello to Snowy the Ice Tiger. That's a pity. I guess you're all working. Can I do two chips at a time and hold them? Okay, let's see if we can do it. Yay, we did. I don't have any real uh, animals in house uh, because I'm allergic to loads of animals. <laughs> we got some friends who uh, we actually got a uh, how do you call it a, a, a cat without a hair and a dog without hair. <laughs> really, <laughs> because uh, um, their their mom is a allergic friend of ours and. Uh, they still want to have some pets. It's quite cool. But I don't do that. Uh, we will get a rabbit soon. Bunny, sorry, bunny. Did I say rabbit? Bunny. Hey! Thank you, Steve. Snowy will like that. And my daughter as well. Snowy is taking care of my quality of uh, solar quality here. Snowy will check if I'm doing it good, the correct way and before getting into customers if it's good enough. But I cannot keep Snowy uh, here all the time because uh, he's not mine. Alright, it's time for some LEDs. Let's get them. Uh, I think it's here, yes. Oh, you're gonna love these. Uh, these are uh, my uh, LEDs. Look at all the LEDs here. Have you ever seen so many LEDs in uh, one place? And they're in separately packed bags, and the reason for that is um, that sometimes uh, uh, they, they come in in these cabinets, these ones here, uh, these ones from China. And But the problem is they're not always exactly the same, so I cannot mix them. I want to make sure that they're uh, the same, exactly the same color um, when I put them in. Yeah, things, yeah. So. Pink cat and Chinese crested dog, something like that. I uh, I think you're totally right, Steve. Uh, I don't have any uh, knowledge of that, but I think you're right. So I need twelve of these. Oh, those are just nine, I think. One, two, three, four. No, just one more. Okay. Now this is a bit harder. And I could use a trick for that, but I'm not going to because it's way too much time to do that. So, ground to the left. And ground to the right at D3, okay. We'll do that. LEDs. Loads of LEDs. Yes, indeed. And these colors are just cool. We yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know how Sinclair managed it, but the spectrum just looks cool with all the colors and these LEDs. Just add to that, you know. So I think everyone should have a ZX die card just because it suits the spectrum so so well. Don't you think, Steve? I think you will agree. Oh, almost on my eye. <laughs> that was close. Should be careful with that. I don't like having uh, metal pins in my eye. Uh, left, sorry. To the left, to the left. And only D3 should go to the right. 
All right. Left again. And one more. All right. All righty. All righty, mate. So I only solder one uh, one side to start with, and I push them down so they are straight up. And that uh, always takes care of uh, making sure that they are aligned properly. Uh, sometimes with some of these, uh, you have you got some uh, uh, plastic uh, edges that will uh, mess up the, what I'm doing here, but most of the time it's good. Yeah, everyone needs a die card. Everyone, even even uh, people who don't have a ZX Spectrum. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't know. I think Bill Gates should have a die card as well. Uh, Wells, uh, our Queen should need one. Our King. Everyone in uh, every country should have one. But I don't think I can make so so many uh, by hand then. It's another thing. ZX Spectrum on each desk. We should have that, don't you think? And not because it's, it's really useful, but because it's nostalgic. And nostalgic is really cool. Right, so super green, super green, I hope you've seen uh, Fifth Element, best movie ever, super green, we got blue and we got red, which pill will you take? The blue one or the red one? Do you want to, to stick in the matrix or do you want to get in the real world? Anyway, uh, blue is on top, I think. Uh, let me check. Always forget. Yeah. So we'll start with blue. No, did I? I'm not sure. No, I, I think I will start with red. Okay. Ground up. The short leg is ground. So, uh, who do you think needs a ZX die card, guys? Tell me, and if you're watching this video later on, tell me, who do you think should need a die card? Katy Perry, should she need a die card? Um, Ariana Grande. Who else? Everyone needs a die card. Oprah Winfrey. Sir Clive Sinclair, maybe. Nicely aligned, not perfect, but and I know some people got ODD, so taking care of that. Yeah, that's perfect. Is he 80 already? Man, time flies. I really wish uh, to have been able to meet him at least once. 
I hope he's okay. Uh, but I did hear uh, his health wasn't the best. But uh, and I also heard that uh, he's not uh, really interested in ZX Spectrum stuff anymore because uh, he's a businessman, you know. And once uh, the business is over, he just thinks of new things. He has been kept doing that for quite a while. So I think he was even involved with uh, his son's project with the uh, the new. Um, bikes and so because that was th those are things for the future you know instead of the past he's not interested in that so I guess he, he might not be interested in uh, what people do with retro computer stuff these days but maybe he is I'm not sure we'd just like to thank him for uh, everything he did and uh, um, how it influenced my life, you can say that. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating uh, a lot, I think. But I can imagine uh, if you're uh, a well known person, that so many people would like to say something to you that's quite hard to actually do that. So I will leave it at the way it is. But if I would get a chance, if, if someone would uh, send me a message or call me and say uh, you have the chance now if you come over here, then I might take a plane and get there. Oh, I need just one more LED, I think. Oh. Alright. So these are almost done. A couple of more parts. Uh, the shitty parts like the pin headers, I always hate to install them because they move always. Uh, it's quite um, interesting that in uh, this era it's normal, if you can call it that, that people get into nostalgic stuff. I don't think there was such a big market for nostalgic stuff uh, 15 years ago. Um, so it's something from, from now, from this time. And of course, in the, in the past, you would, uh, for example, uh, think of, uh, of movies like Grease and Annie, which are made uh, way beyond the time that they try to look like. Um, but there wasn't much like that in that time, of course, uh, except for cars, cars and other nostalgic stuff, which has always been a market for. But uh, nowadays, uh, there's, there's such a huge market for... An interest, of course, not a, not a new market. Interest in uh, um, retro stuff, vintage stuff. If you see how many channels there are for uh, retro electronic stuff, it's it's cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, he did, and um, of course he was thinking as uh, oh, as an entrepreneur trying to sell uh, stuff and um, I wonder if he I wonder if he if he ever knew what he was doing with um, revolutionizing the computer market I don't know did he knew when he was doing it or did he just want to create products I wonder I've not seen that many interviews with him a couple Because uh, sometimes you do things that uh, that you know only later 
that uh, had quite a big impact. And uh, when I was in Cambridge last time, a couple of months ago, the uh, Sinclair building at uh, Willis Road, once again, but this time with a huge uh, tour, it was awesome. It's uh, just a pity I lost all the footage of that because of a Windows problem. But anyway, um, the tour was great. And, but thinking, knowing that uh, Sinclair only was there for what two years or something, it's quite a pity. Should have been there for 20 years or something instead of a couple. That's what competition does. So uh, many people say that competition is good, but if you think of it, it's just trying to get your business better than the other and making other businesses impossible. Anyway, that's how it works. <laughs> Look at all the color on the screen here. Except for Snowy, who's just black and white. Yeah, I think you're right, Steve. I think uh, that was the new thing. I think he knew that he uh, that there was a huge market that wasn't um, already filled, getting computers inside homes. That's true. And of course, in America, you already had loads of consoles, but in the UK, uh, there weren't that many, so home computers were uh, totally different. And the fun, fun thing is if you think of consoles, of course, uh, the millions have been sold. Hundreds of millions, maybe even billions already. Uh, yeah, I think so. Billions. Uh, but nowadays, uh, consoles uh, are getting towards just computers, PCs, because uh, they want to offer people uh, the best of the best with consoles. But yeah, the problem is, if it, once you buy a console, it's, it's getting old, you know? <laughs> And uh, if you have a modern PC desktop, you can upgrade it as much as you, as you like, quite easily. Um, so consoles are trying to get to the same level as uh, high-end PCs can, and, and they, they're just becoming more, more of a PC in a, in a fixed case without a keyboard. Oh, although you can connect keyboards with many games nowadays, like Fortnite and others. So uh, they're just PCs and uh, offered in a different way, but it's the main difference. So uh, I think computers like the ZX Spectrum and others in the time with a keyboard were ahead of their time. <laughs> you can call it that because, uh, well, I, th I think we will always have consoles, but. Um, PCs are just more powerful, you know, if you have the budget, of course. Yeah, gaming dedicated PCs, you're totally right. So, if you think of that, you better buy a PC because you can do more with a PC than with a console. Uh, the only thing is that sometimes uh, you pay a little less for a console because um, the manufacturers try to get profit from the games sold and the fees for the licenses and you know so i think you're uh, totally right with that and we had a couple of consoles but mainly for the kids uh, although uh, we we once had a, a wii the first one which uh, was quite cool back in the day although it's what is it 15 15 years ago yeah i think something like that 
Um, because uh, we liked the, the new um, input methods, you know, uh, with the uh, wireless controllers. So that was quite quite cool back then. We like to play. Uh, we like to uh, go for some bowling and uh, other stuff, <laughs> dancing. <laughs> okay, let's see. We have the LEDs in. Now we get to the um, capacitors. Capacitors. Lots of capacitors. Six for each board. So. I think this is more than enough. Way, way too much. Way too much. Okay. These are also a pain to install because you have to push them a bit, and if you push too hard, they will throw to one, get to one side. Anyway, let's get it done. Let's get it over with. Uh, and one lettuce bent, of course. Because they are so tiny and thin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, two more. I think this is the first stream where I did a uh, die cards live. I think. I'm not sure. Did I do more already? Live. I don't think so. Alright. Let's put that aside. I got two uh, Abrant 100 nanofarad capacitors nowadays, so you see two types here. Now we're only using the more expensive ones nowadays because these ones from China uh, are not completely reliable and you might think well why are you using them in um, even with DIY kits that's because we all test them these we test them all believe it or not so um, we, we stopped use, uh, ordering them but we have to uh, get rid of the stock first uh, oh. But these are the last of the cheap ones. And then we're getting to, uh, towards the uh, more expensive A brand ones. Okay. Right. Right. After this, we're going to install one transistor. And then the pin headers and the jumpers. I even had to order jumpers from Farnell this time because uh, the ones from China are still not in. So we've got expensive jumpers uh, on this board. They were at least five times more expensive. I'm not joking. So uh, I think they're uh, five cents each then. <laughs> of course, it doesn't matter that much. We only need three of those. So it's not, no big deal. And uh, for me, it's more important to just finish products, even though some parts might be a bit more expensive than usual. but. And we get loads of packages in every day. But sometimes it just takes too long. And I order loads of them as well, uh, 2000 at a time or something. But sometimes it's just too late. There's really still a huge delay worldwide with shipping, especially to the US at this moment. So uh, many packages uh, are uh, taken up to six weeks to arrive at a customer and that's mainly because there's a huge backlog at, the, at customs um, 
that's quite hard to explain to them because some uh, some people are getting impatient, especially people buying on eBay. Um, so what can you do about it? You know. Uh, <laughs> recently, I had one package um, with a value of about 150 pounds or something or more. I'm not sure. I have to check. Um, which got delayed and we didn't know where it was because it didn't get scanned. So I shipped another package and I was about to start a search with Postanel. And after I shipped it, the day after, believe it or not, the first package arrived. And it happens and it happens and it happens. So of course when something happens like that, then you know what the actual delay is. <laughs> so about six weeks for a package to the US, which is ridiculous, normally it takes a couple of days. Um, but it happens. Anyway, just to do, deal with it. Right, time for the transistor. So I actually got uh, two, uh, two types of these uh, BC847s, I think. Oh, a 548s. I got, oh, that's my phone. So I got um, this one with the fine pitch, and I also got the white pitch one for the Hardikin kids. I hope it's not the school for my daughter because she did, didn't feel that well this morning. Wasn't Corona, by the way. Right, and now you may think, uh, why, why did she, uh, why did she go, go to school then? <laughs> well, that's because last week she all, uh, already had a two or three days to, um, staying at home because she didn't feel well, and there was, wasn't. I think it's just because she sleeps very late because she's way too busy in her head. Uh, but in the afternoon she got loads of energy, so that was last week. So she just needs to learn to sleep well, which sometimes is hard for some people, like for myself. I wake up every night, can't do anything about it. Right, um, I want to get in these switches because I love putting these in. These are just cool switches. are quite long so I'm coming down to avoid problems. Right. Oh. All the way you go. All right. Next are the pin headers. I think we're done here. Side switch, header jumper, tactile switches, I don't have them yet, I will pick them. And then the parts should go in. I'll leave it open, why not? Um, pin header is single, straight. I need a bit more than that. Okay. 
where is the tool I want to use. That should be enough. So the reason I don't like putting these in is because you should be hold should hold them with your nail or something. And then aligning them is quite challenging. Still not aligned properly. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I will uh, power them on on the spectrum, but not on the uh, television because of the lack of cameras. I will, however, uh, one day have a DSLR instead of a Sbrio camera for even better quality. But until then, we'll do it this way. Almost done with three die cards. Uh, flash. And M1 normal. And the ROM output enable jumper, which uh, can be disabled for use on Brazilian ZX Spectrum clones, where they put on the video signal instead of output enable. Whoop. Yes. Yeah, you can do it that way. I, I've tried similar ways to holding uh, parts in place, but you can, you see, it, it's just a bit more, uh, bit more, how do you say it? Challenging, but you can do it this way without uh, any blobs of uh, blue stuff. You just have to be uh, agile. 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 I was very agile when I worked uh, at an IT office. I was uh, talking to uh, former colleague yesterday. It's nice speaking with him again. It has been quite a couple of years already. Too many jumper. I shouldn't have done that. You should never pick too many jumpers. They're not completely straight. Yeah. That's better. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it. Alright. You see, Steve, if you do this uh, a lot, then you find. Uh, creative ways of uh, making it as simple as possible. Alright, what's next? Uh, tactile buttons. Buttons, we like buttons, don't we? Oh, oh my, oh, I moved my camera, sorry. Sorry for that. Alright, uh, tactile. Let's use seven millimeters. I got loads of different types, but I think I used these ones before. And some edge connectors if we have. Yes. Need to make more edge connectors every couple of days nowadays because uh, I make so many stuff, so many interfaces. So these are the seven millimeters, and I don't like it that they uh, actually measure the size from the bottom of the the button because 
I would prefer if they measure it from above to bottom, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Because you can actually see that the, the, the part sticking out is not 7mm, of course. Uh, but uh, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? And the reason I'm saying that is that sometimes it's hard to order the correct ones from China. Uh, they're quite cheap there, but sometimes you get a model that's one millimeter longer or shorter. And that could cause problems in the uh, interfaces that um, you want the button to stick out, but not too much. It's no problem with this interface, of course. You could use any size here. Even 12 millimeters or something. I have longer ones. I have very long ones. All right. What do you think of it, Snowy? Is it nice? Am I doing well? All right. I guess someone who comes into the stream now might think I'm crazy with uh, the snow tiger on my desk. Alrighty. So I push it down here so the so I can align it in a bit. If I do do that, it's hard to align the connector properly. So now I'm looking from the side. It's almost aligned, just a bit back. So, we're doing the meet me again. Steve, can we do a challenge? You can solder on that connector the fastest. This is a real uh, speed, this is not sped up. Next. Whoop. Whoop. Yeah, that's perfect. One, one. So most people are buying uh, DIY kits, but I do sell some uh, assembled ones, um, hence I uh, make way more DIY kits than assembled ones on this video. to test these because uh, inserting chips is uh, easy of course well <laughs> you can do it wrong but <clears throat> I still often bend lags of chips it happens it just happens let's clean up the table a bit because I need the space in a moment okay nice nice idea to uh, have a tool to make them perpendic perpendicular. I just uh, eyeball it, obviously. Yep. So these are fresh ed edge connectors crafted yesterday. Old stock ones. And my stock is depleting, so I have to get 
and contact with my uh, broker again for uh, additional stock. And I hope I can still find them for uh, about the same price because deers are hard to get. And after uh, testing these, I'm going to have a break. Talk about dinner for tonight. Get something for in between. No stroke bubbles. I, I, I should not eat stro more stroke bubbles. They're not healthy if you eat that many. I won't. So uh, let's get something uh, more better for your health. All right, uh, let's power down the soldering iron. I think I've got everything on. Yeah, I think so. So I always put these um, rubber feet here. Uh, just put them on top of the, uh, the pins of the IC socket, is no problem at all. This is a very soft rubber, so it will go on quite easily. And this way uh, it will uh, be aligned quite nicely with the ZX Spectrum, that's, uh, that's the reason of doing it that way. Alright, so more people watching, I think everyone wants to see uh, the result. Again, I'm not going to power on the Spectrum because I don't have the camera on that side, but I'm, go I'm going to power it on, but not with the uh, video output of the Spectrum. Just for... Uh, to see if the cartridges... the cards are working as they should. That's two. And the last one here. Alright. Nice! I love it! Let's get some chips. I would like some chips. Fish and chips. Mm. I'm getting hungry. Uh, LS32. Uh, um, which was the other one? Uh, 138, of course. And 273s. Right, these have already been tested because uh, if I include them with um, die cards, DIY kits, uh, they should work, obviously. So I test all the chips that come from China, which are these LS273s. The other twos come from uh, local sources from Fornell or Mouser or something. Hence I do not test those because they're, they never have been unreliable. So, for some reason, I got two types here. I got uh, the glow, the the shiny ones, and the matte matted ones. So I'm uh, selecting the same looking ones for the people who care about that, like myself. All right. This is a shiny one, and this is also a shiny one. So we're done with those. Oh. That went wrong. Let me check what happened here. Oh, dang. I have to get into a meeting in a second, in a minute. Ah. No, you can't. Oh, man, I forgot about it. Uh, dang it. So, I'm afraid. <laughs> I have to get in a school meeting in a second by... Uh, Microsoft Teams. So, unfortunately... Man, time flies. Uh, I have to close down this, this stream in a second. And I cannot show you the end result. Um, well, um, I might get back for that in part 2 later on. Uh, I hope so, because uh, the meeting starts in 5 minutes. <laughs> and I have to set up here uh, quickly the, the, the computer. Ah, oh, man, sorry for that, guys. Um, I cannot uh, be, be uh, too late for that because it's, uh, it's my school teacher for my daughter and 
she has more of those meetings this afternoon. So <laughs> I have to finish the stream and we're not check the, if they, these work. Um, I promise I will try to get back to you in about 15 minutes when the talk is over. Sorry. Um, so part two is probably coming up. See you later.